This morning, we're getting reactions to the opposition's proposal that dual citizens sit in Parliament. Opposition leader Mark Golding says it's his personal view and not that of the PNP that dual citizens should be eligible to sit as members of Parliament. So the, my position is that this dual citizenship should not be a bar to service. That's my own view. Uh, and I, I, you know, I think the party will continue to have discussions on this because, as I've said, this issue has not, we've not had an opportunity to really discuss it because we didn't know what the specific reform proposals were until this draft report emerged and then permission was very latterly um, obtained to share it even with me as a leader of the opposition. So, but that is the position that we have put forward because we think that it's appropriate given the, the nature of the Jamaican society where roughly half of our citizens do live outside our physical boundaries. The issue of dual citizenship featured heavily in the aftermath of the September 2007 general elections. The PNP went to court to have five JLP MPs, starting with Darrell Vaz in West Portland, removed from office on the grounds that they were dual citizens at the time of their nomination and hence ineligible to stand for office. Mr. Golding says he believes members of the Jamaican diaspora should have the opportunity to sit in Parliament. We, we got through covid after the collapse of the tourism industry, largely because of the support from the diaspora, where we didn't have a balance of payments crisis, we didn't have a foreign exchange crisis. So the, I think it's appropriate to allow them. The question of residency needs to be resolved as to whether you're going to have a residency requirement um, in order to run. And you know, the existing provision of one year's ordinary residence to be eligible, I think, is reasonable. Um, in, ter in the terms of the Senate, we, might, we could consider waiving that requirement to allow one or two persons from the diaspora to sit on the Senate, even if they are not resident here. But these are the kind of issues that need further discussion at the committee. That's Mark Golding, the opposition leader. He was speaking at a press conference on Tuesday. For a reaction, we're joined by the former director of elections and, of course, former head of Jamaica Customs, Danville Walker. Good morning, sir. Morning. It's been a long time. Yes, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been uh -huh. a minute. When you heard yesterday, because the news emerged uh -huh. yesterday, that it was the proposal coming from the leader of the People's National Party, reasoned position that dual citizens should not be barred from sitting as members of parliament. What went uh -huh. through your mind? But you know, I tell you, it's like you take one position yesterday, you take a new position today, right? When it be convenient to you, you just have a different position. None of the things that I heard him say didn't exist then. You think people just uh, migrate the other day in Jamaica, right? When this issue came up, I pointed out at the time, you know, a Pakistani national could qualify to be Prime Minister of Jamaica, but I was born in Jamaica. Because I lived in the States and had U.S. citizenship, I wouldn't be able to qualify to run for a seat in the House. And, you know, the PNP back then had a plan B. That when they lose the election, they'd go to court and take back the government. But it didn't work. And now, it is now convenient to sound as if it's popular to take the position that dual citizens should be allowed to serve in those representatives. Uh, and what, what, what it means to me is that I don't know when to believe what you're saying is something you truly believe. If you are prepared to go as far as to go to court, causing so much public expenditure, and then in a few years, simply change your position, as if that was your position from before, right? And I'm sure if I can rely on people who can switch their views so easily on these weighty national issues. I, I had a conversation yesterday, uh, Danville Walker, with a, a senior journalist, an esteemed member of the uh -huh. position, profession, who was insisting that 
the PNP's position or Mark Golding's position does not represent a contradiction for the PNP. And I said, well, how can it not be a contradiction? And he was making the argument that what it's not a contradiction because in 2007, the PNP stood on a point of what the Constitution says. And it was on that principle, what the Constitution says, and to honor the Constitution, that they went to court to engineer the changes that they sought. And I thought that that was madness. Your view. Well, you know, it talk about two sides of the boat. I hear this other argument about my personal position. Yeah, the leader of the opposition, you're not. Yeah, they representing the People's National Party's position. Or you're chatting some veranda conversation, which you wish to have the opportunity to deny sometime in the future or later. And, and this is my difficulty. If you have a position, stay the position, stand up for the position, right? And that's the position of my party. Or quite frankly, you shouldn't be the leader of the opposition, right? If you're some backbench, I guess you cannot do that. I wouldn't even accept it then. You're part of the party. You have a view. That's the party's view. That's your view. Or you be quiet. All right? As simple as that. I, get, I hear about this defending the Constitution. You defend it when it is convenient and expedient for you to do so. Right? All those principles existed then. Right? And I, and I believe then that um, if you, as I do as this, and I, a person born in Jamaica could not be denied the opportunity to run, right? They had persons on their side. There are many, the truth be told, you know, and co if they are to declare and come clean, quite a few very senior people in the National Party were in ministers or U.S. citizens even when this issue was going on. And um, and they they are well aware. They are well aware. But hypocrisy don't need to be part of our politics. We people need to be called out and don't trust hypocrites. That's all I can tell you. Because down the road they're going to sell you out. Whenever it's convenient, they're going to sell you out and sell out this country in a heartbeat. Right? Hold that's the line. My, that's my personal view. <laughs> right? That the when and when the time. When you look at the history of how, where the debt of this country come from, and we make a lot of talk about the debt to this country, the debt this country has put into, you know. But I want to have, you know, a lot of people made a lot of money putting this country into that debt. And there are other opportunities for us to get finance this country without borrowing that money. But it suited them to borrow that money. Hear you on they that. made money doing it. We're talking dual citizenship and the position of the opposition leader, Mark Golding, that he believes that dual citizens should not be barred from sitting as members of the House of Representatives. He says it's his view that dual citizens should be given that, well, should that, that courtesy should be extended to them. The laws should facilitate that. He says it's not the position of the PNP. We're speaking with Danville Walker, former director of elections who had to give up uh, that role after he was well it, it was published that he was a dual citizen he held dual united states and jamaican citizenship and he had to give up that role that was just part of a story which captivated the country from the 2007 general elections when Abe Dabdoub went after Daryl Vaz in the court. The court ruled that Mr. Vaz, as a dual citizen, was not eligible to sit in the House of Representatives. So Abe Dabdoub was the man, the lawyer, and the member of the PNP at the time who went with this issue and he dragged the PNP with him. Now, before we go back to Danville Walker, I want to play for you a clip from a speech Abe Dabdoub gave on May 1, 2008. That was, what, 16 years ago. This is what he said about dual citizenship at that time. Our constitution has provisions designed to ensure that only persons with undivided loyalties can become members of the legislature. Sections 39, 40, and 41 provide in section 39 it, it says that you must be a commonwealth citizen of the age of 21 years and upwards and ordinarily resident in jamaica for 12 months immediately preceding the election and no other person shall be so qualified 
This section creates what I call the primary qualification for nomination. If you are not a Jamaican Commonwealth citizen, you cannot nominate. The provision states that no other person shall be so qualified. A reasonable interpretation puts the strictures as such that there are divided loyalties or split allegiances, that is, persons with dual citizenship cannot serve. You must give up your foreign citizenship if you wish to stand for election. Anyone who has, who is a Commonwealth citizen and a citizen of the United States of a Russia or Cuba at the same time is some other person and therefore, in my view, not qualified to be nominated. Section 40 doesn't only deal with the disqualification if you have sworn allegiance. There are other disqualifications. If you are a judge of the Supreme Court, you are disqualified from being in the legislature. If you have a con contract with the government of Jamaica, you are disqualified from being a member of the House or the Senate. If you are a member of the Senate, you are disqualified from being a member of the House of Representatives. These are statuses that individuals, although being Jamaicans, may have that cause them to be not qualified to be elected. Now, if you notice, Section 39 speaks about qualifications for nomination. Section 40 speaks about your status that makes you not qualified to be elected. Abe Dabdoub speaking, May 1, 2008. What do you make of what he just said? Well, not what he just said, but what he said in 2008, Mr. Walker. Well, you know, I, of course, he have heard it all before. You know, and, and um, yes, I understand, you know, the, what he said. I read it when the time was there. I believe that what, what they, they knew then, that there were persons in their party who were also dual citizens. I don't believe, though, that they editorizing about divided loyalties. That's his addition, right? Those words aren't in the, what he's reading, as far as I know, divided loyalties. That's his interpretation, right? As persons have always shown that how loyal they were. So I don't know how, if he can speak to divided loyalties, right? And I don't want to be an illegal luminary anyway, right? But my, my, my view then was that, you know, um, persons are nominated. And there's also a clause, which he has, he wouldn't read that, because when you're, they're taking the electoral system to task, that says only a judge can determine if someone is not qualified or not. And, so, and the persons are clearly, properly nominated. If you have an issue, then you go to court. Right? They, they, and and what, what they hoped was that the court would award them those seats and they would now take back the government. That was the big plan B, you know, right? Now, I already played earlier Mr. Golden's um, remarks, are, And my question is, is that his view or is that the, the PNP's view? He said because it's his. Because his, his view is irrelevant, you know. Right? It's irrelevant. You know, anybody can have a view. Um, that's like I know, everybody have one, right? But my, my issue is, what's the view of the People's National Party? And what is it going to be going forward? And it, it, we've been talking about this constitutional reform long enough now. You, your position should be fleshed out fully and stated what your position is. Not, not a bag of chat that if you vote for me, I, 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 I will flesh it out. We kind of pass that now, right? People must run on their records. People must run on their policy proposals. What if you came to government, would you do differently? We, we, we anxiously want to know because we don't want to make the same mistakes that were made before that put us into such, 
you know, economic hardship. Let's, let's, let's put those matters on the table, right? These, these issues you were talking about, no, not when changing about life in Jamaica, you know, right? Persons like myself who wanted to serve, we gave up U.S. citizenship. We, we did what we needed to do, right? And with and so, with that in mind, with that in mind, Mr. Walker, since the mm. proposal has come to light from the opposition leader, there has been the argument again of whether um, you know this proposal should become law again because persons who are dual citizens, right, they'll be able to sit as MPs and they'll be able to make laws, and then perhaps when the laws uh, they can opt out and go back to wherever there they came from the united states for example when they no longer want to be under those very laws that they they helped to yeah, make. That, that, i agree i was all of my view in that if you're going to vote in jamaica because there's always argument why people in diaspora can't vote i tell you of course you can vote you just have to come home right you come home and vote and live under the laws that are created from your vote but don't vote for something and then run around and say, boy, you know, if I didn't know, you I hear that, right? I had a choice where I want to live as a U.S. citizen for many years. And I lived in the States. All my children are born are U.S. citizens. My whole family is U.S. citizen. I'm the only one not a U.S. citizen. I freely gave up my U.S. passport and citizenship because I wish to live in Jamaica now. Right? And I said to anybody who in the diaspora who always seems to come into me to ask, should I come home? You know, if you want, if you ever ask me that, you probably shouldn't matter. Right? I came home because I love my country and I live here. Right? I was long, I had a green card before I'm 20 years old. And I joined the JDF at that age with a green card. I didn't, I had all the opportunities in the world at that time. But I chose here, and I choose it again, and I enjoy my life here. It do, it's not for everybody, you know, right? But we have to recognize that there's a diaspora, and they, and they can be accorded a number of benefits and, and those things. But if that is the position of the People's National Party, I want to hear from the People's National Party, not just one man in the People's National Party. So, I so, want to hear what their view is. So the other part of the, right? uh, the other part of the Golding proposal, Danville Walker, for the Senate to be increased, the size of the Senate to be increased to 42 members. Uh, We're kids. <laughs> 42. Yes, sir. To what end? Are they going to be free to have different views? What, to what end? Right? Do it. This is not a, a high school SBA project, you know. It's not what this is, you know. Right? To what end? That's the question that you must put to the, the media, need to put to them. To what end? So I ask you this. So I ask you this. So, mm. so this is where the question is going. So he says, look, make dual citizens eligible to sit as MPs. Swell the ranks of the Senate from 21 to 42, so 100% increase. Do you see that as a PNP positioning itself as the champion of the diaspora, leaving the JLP with no room to maneuver politically when it comes to wooing support from the diaspora? Well, that is the view today. I don't know what the view is going to be tomorrow, you know, right? Because if tomorrow morning it's convenient to change that view, I'm sure they'll change it, right? I, I, my, my, again, it must come down to, to what end? What is it that this is supposed to achieve for us? Right? Because all this is, all you're doing is increasing the bureaucracy, you know. And I'm going to tell me one day, you know, if you take 10 jackass and tell them together, you don't get a resource, you know. <laughs> it's just 10 jackass. So increasing the size of parliament or the senate, you know, is more in particular, I don't know how that results in, in better governance. I don't see how. And that's what I would want to understand. How does it mean more training for persons in the public sector? How does it mean for more modernization in the public sector? How does it convert the public sector into more of a meritocracy based on achievement? How, how does it mean that public servants are more empowered to carry out what we need them to do to make my life easier as a Jamaican? Right? How does it reduce poverty in Jamaica? How does it create a, a, um, a gateway to the middle class 
for so much underclass in Jamaica that has existed for so long, right? With so many educated people inside Parliament and no change in the periphery. Tell me how that helps us to get there. Then, I, then you have my attention. One last right? thing before we go, Danville Walker. If mm -hmm. it is that the opposition leader has made what he says is his position clear, to whom are we to look for the PNP's position if the leader says his position is not the PNP's position? Maybe the next conference I'm up. Will that guide us? I don't know, right? But my, my view is that it has to be articulated, right? And Mr. Golden is a lawyer. Maybe him is a corporate lawyer or something like that. I don't know, right? But I would expect a higher level of discourse from someone who has his training. Absolutely. That if that. you are the leader of a political, one of the major political parties, one of two, right, in this country, it's, you know, you should deliver better than that. Hear you on With that. the greatest of respect, sir. Hear you on that. Thank you for your time this morning, Danville Walker. All right. Take care, guys. We're continuing this conversation about the proposal by the well the suggestion by the opposition leader mark golding that jamaica make ready to have a constitution that has the ccj as its final appellate court mr golding laid out the argument once again during a media briefing on tuesday to address the latest snag that the constitutional reform process appears to have hit he's calling on the prime minister to say look you need mr holness to state publicly your position on the ccj the opposition wants to know he says he's willing to remain with the british monarchy for the time being if the issue of the ccj remains unsettled the constitutional reform committee report has been submitted to cabinet and Mr. Golding says, look, the public must be given the right, given the chance to view the document before it goes any further, certainly before it goes to Parliament. We're being joined by political commentator Kevin O'Brien Chang for a response. Mr. O'Brien Chang, good morning to you. Morning, everyone. You've heard um, all that the opposition leader has had to say. You've heard from the Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs, who is also co-chair of the CRC, as well as some of the members who've been uh, speaking on this matter um, on, our, on our program. What do you make of all that has been said? The approach from the opposition leader, what has been said by Minister Malahu Fort and the others? Andrew Holness should do one simple thing. So, okay, guys. The CCJ is a blockage for constitu constitutional reform. We are going to have a referendum on the CCJ. And you have three choices. The CCJ, a Jamaica final court, or stay with the Privy Council. I'm listening to the people. I believe in Jamaica should determine whatever legal system, final court they want. So I'm putting the referendum to the people, and I'm willing to accept whatever the people say. In the end, it is the people who go before a court. Would Holness do that? that. Would, would Holness do that, uh, even though you say it's simple, Kevin, because if you recall, the latest Don Anderson poll done in 2023, I think, returned findings which showed that 59% of Jamaicans are in favor of the CCJ being our appellate court. Now, if, if Holness's position is that that we should stay with the Privy Council, you would ask him to put himself in a bind? Just say, Andrew Honest doesn't have to say what his position is. Just said, I'm willing to accept whatever the people say. That poll, by the way, was before the Vibes Cartel trial on the Privy Council, but it doesn't matter. Look, my position, you know, I've always said whatever the people want, give it to them. It's a democracy. Why, why shouldn't the people choose their final court in a democracy? Andrew Holness has to say, look, I'm willing to abide by whatever the people say. Why get emotionally wedded to some to um, any of those choices when it's the people who, who should decide? Just say, look, I put to the people and whatever they say, I accept it. If more than 50, if, if, we, if not, and they get less than 50 percent, all of them, well, obviously, you stay with the status quo. But what's so tough about that, putting it to the people to decide and accepting whatever they say? Why were everyone getting emotionally wedded to these things? I mean, what's the CCJ? Why the CCJ hasn't proven itself? Why I don't know why people running it down. If you want, to, if you want independence, go to Jamaican Final Court. 
If you figure the Privy Council is doing the right job, stay with the Privy Council. But some people want CCJ. Let the people decide. That is my, it's a simple thing in a democracy. Mr. O'Brien Chang, why do you believe the CCJ hasn't proven itself? What's the CCJ based on? A group of countries which has no legal standing anywhere. It has no legal, it's, it's not a legal entity. It's a bunch of pe people shoved, shoved together because they're former British um, colonies. And we shove them together and say, okay, we're going to have a these people. It has no legal standing, the group of countries. People can leave at, at will any time they want. People can come out and leave. So I personally, if I'm an in want independence for Jamaica, give me a Jamaican final court. If I'm happy with the performance of the Privy Council over the years, let's keep the Privy Council. But again, again my views don't matter. What, I'm one person who cares what I think. Put it to the people. If the people want a CCJ, let it be CCJ. If they want Jamaican final court, let it be Jamaican final court. If they want Privy Council, let it be Privy Council. I'm a believer in the wisdom of crowds, which Jamaica is based upon. Why do we elect a leader? Why do we elect government? Because we figure the people's choice is the best choice. We don't point government. Let me ask you this. In terms of how the wholeness administration has handled this constitutional reform process, from before the committee was tasked with getting on with the job of constitutional reform, the PNP made it clear that, look, we want to know the government's position on the CCJ. And remember that Golding, Mark Golding, delayed naming his members until he could get clarity on certain points, including the issue of the CCJ and when that would come up for discussion in the committee's deliberations. He was told that it was have been the second phase. So the PNP have said that, look, even though their members participated in the deliberations in the first phase, it was under the they were under the impression and waiting to see what would emerge as the government's position on this important matter to the PNP of the CCG. And they've said that the first phase is almost done. A report is ready, submitted to cabinet, and they still have not seen the government's position on the CCG. Hence, why Golding is saying that they will take no further part. Is that a position that you think that makes sense? First of all, it's constitutional reform. Do you hear a, a massive cry from the people that they want change? I've talked to a lot of people and people who talk to people. There's almost zero interest on the ground. People don't care if they care about constitutional reform. You know what they care about? This is a big people conversation, I presume. They care about the Bogre law. They don't want to change that. They don't want to change abortion law. And most people I talk to, whatever the polls say, want to keep the Privy Council. So you're saying that's what people care about. So the, the, the king. The, the, the Republic and the King, people don't give a damn. Just like they don't care about Mark Golden color. See, some people say, oh, they want no white king. But for a white opposition leader, do the people care? The PNP got more seats than the JLP in the local government election. It's a non-issue to the people on the ground. So you're saying the reform, sure pro the the reform people, process from... The, the, so, Kevin, the reform process from last year, then was a grand what, waste of time? A total grand waste of time. Michael Malley in 77 said, we're going to get rid of the Queen. In 95, P.J. Patterson was saying the same thing. The people don't care. In fact, he talked to a lot of Jamaicans on the ground. They said, well, what difference is it going to make in my life? You change, you're going to change the governor general to president. So what? It's going to cost a lot of money, and it's going to make zero effect on my life. Why should we waste time and effort and money on this? That's what I hear on the ground. When we reach Barbados, 20,000 U.S. per capita, maybe we should be thinking about this. But right now, for most Jamaicans, constitutional reform is way down the line. You have crime, more economy grow, better education system. It's about 20th on the list of people's concerns. Yes, when we get well, well, well off, fix all of our problems. Yes, let's do it. But until then, people say we have more important things to worry about. That is when I talk to people on the ground, what I hear. One of the members of the Constitutional Reform Committee, uh, Hugh Small, King's Council, he said that it should be suspended, the process should be suspended until after the next general election. What's it's, going be, it's going to be suspended, as it always has been, since 1977, because the public is just not interested. And, in fact, they, let me tell you, Jimmy, they, I read, you ever read this book by the Dahl, uh, by On Democracy? The author is Dahl, I forget his first name. The, he has analyzed different forms of democracy. You know the most stable form of democracy on the planet? First past the post-constitutional monarchy, Westminster. Guess what system Jamaica has? Exactly that. <laughs> the top five countries, if you look at the top ten countries on the, the Human Development Index and progress and all that, seven out of ten are first past the post-constitutional monarchy Westminster systems. 
We have the best political system in the world, and we want to change it to what? Some um, American hodgepodge. America has the one of the worst systems in the world. We want to get presidential systems like South America and Africa, where con- coups constantly and revolts and revolutions. Why would we go there? So, it makes so, no sense. so you're people, saying, so, people so, understand what we have? A, what we have? Let, let me put it bluntly: Jamaica is the most stable, non-white democracy on the planet of over a million people. So you are like that. So you're saying and we want to go. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So you're That's saying most Jamaican feel. So you're saying the Constitutional Reform Committee. Well, you've said it. See, the work since last year has been a grand waste of I time. Said it for last year, for hold, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Waste of time and money so, 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 so you're saying that that don't? It's not even to suspend the process until after the election. Suspend the process until the people call for it. Exactly the point. It's going to die anyway because this is hodgepodge here. Unless Andrew Holness gets bold and brave and calls the Constitution on the CCJ, it's going to die because you, you mean cause a referendum on the CCJ. You're going to have opposition. Yeah. You need opposition and government to yeah. unite. Remember they tried when they took to put CCJ in and you know? 2015, yes. Right. And the, and the, the Senate stopped it. And the, the PNP is going to stop it now. That's how it goes. Until the people cry, why, why waste time? And as I said, unless Andrew Holness gets bold and does the logical thing, let the people decide. And any effort to shove through the CCG against the people's will. Any government that does it is going to get booted out. That's my feeling. Here the people that. want their final say. As a democracy, they should have it. We have to run, Kevin. We have to run. The people have decided that we have to end the, the program. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Kevin O'Brien Chang there. Uh, blunt and frank, as you can get.